Wade Phillips is on the line with us. And I Wade, am. Steve Tasker along with John Murphy here in Buffalo. Thanks for coming on with us. Hey, where are you right, the, right now? Well, I'm at home uh, like most people. Uh, you know, I'm not doing I'm not doing nothing, and I don't start till noon. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> lucky, lucky. For Wait, you where is home? Me. I know you you you're two years in with the Rams. You kind of uh, settled in there because your daughter lives there. Is that home now, or are you in Texas? No, I'm in I'm in Houston. We moved back to Houston. Okay. Uh, you enjoyed your two years with the Rams, right? I mean, having your daughter there moved, uh, you know, you and, and your wife had, had had a good time in, in the Rams, and you won. Obviously, you went to a Super Bowl with that crew. Yeah. Yeah, I was there three years, and uh, three years. Uh, we won 35 games in three years and uh, went to a Super Bowl and had a chance to win that one, really, except for um, we didn't we didn't play quite good enough, but we, we played pretty well, so. Uh, yeah, we're we're uh, we're back home in Houston now. You've had a, a run. Of, t- give us a give us a quick synopsis, a real quick brief summary. You were head coach here in Buffalo from uh, '98 to 2000. You've been a part of the NFL, goodness gracious, for almost what four decades or five decades, maybe. I mean, you you started young with your dad there in Houston, right? Yeah, 40, 42 years. I got in, so wow, <laughs> pretty good run. Do you yeah, consider you consider the run overweight, or uh, it seemed like when you first well, uh, when the Rams decided to move on, you sounded like you still wanted to coach somewhere, right? You still do? Yeah, sure, sure. I uh, hopefully somebody will, will pick me up at some time if they need some help, uh, but we'll see. You know, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's a forced retirement. <laughs> Although I was out <laughs> a couple of years ago, I was out a couple of years ago, and and. Uh, Luckily, I got picked up by Denver the next year. We won the Super Bowl that year, so that was pretty nice. Hey, Wade yes, Phillips is our guest. He's on the line with us. So, Wade, I came across a, a stat I kind of find incredible. You have the record in NFL history for most times being a head coach. Six different teams, interim or not, named you a head coach. That's got to be something you're pretty proud of, I would think. Yeah, I got fired six times. <laughs> but, <laughs> you got yeah. a six times. I got that. Too. I got that record too, but. Uh, but uh, actually, you know, actually, as a as a as a uh, well, a head coach and a coordinator, the last ten times, uh, the first year I was there, we went to the playoffs. So I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, one of the, one of the things uh, about this, that you you're also a, an author. You lessons your dad taught you about football and life. What uh, you know, what prompted the book other than the, you know, other than the fact, obviously you had a, a great dad who was a football dad and got you into the, the line of work you're in now. What are some of the things that you really feel, feel like you wanted people to know about your dad bum, who I, I know I was a big fan growing up and, and in my early days, he had just left Houston when I became an oiler myself. So uh, what are some of the lessons that you really wanted people to know about what your dad bum taught you about being a football coach and about life? Yeah, I think mostly about life, and then really I did the book uh, for my for my grandkids, you know, and and let them know about their great granddad and their granddad, I guess. Um, let them know kind of about you know, what he was like, and uh, you know, I was pretty proud of being his son. So, um, and I hope you know football people enjoy it too. Wade Phillips, our guest, former Bills head coach, former Bills defensive coordinator. I have a question for you about defense, Wade. We, we, Steve and I have been talking a lot in the last several weeks about how lucky the Bills are that they have Leslie Frazier getting set for his fourth consecutive year with much of the same personnel and certainly the same defensive scheme. How much of an advantage is that for a team when they have a good a good group that's coming back for the most part, every, every piece is intact? What do you make of that? Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, it's, it's – Unusual in this this day and time, certainly, with all the movement, you lose lose so many players a year. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great to have the same players. That, you know, if they know what to do, uh, that's a big part of it. And you know, if you have the same group, uh, no matter what your scheme is, you know, as long as everybody knows what to do, and then they learn to work together. It's, uh, uh, you know, you got a group that's that's familiar with each other, knows what to do. So that's that's a big advantage, I think. One of the things, one of the things that's going on in the NFL now, uh, Wade, is 
the, the league you know, it's more and more and more as the years pass is becoming more and more of a throwing league. I mean, I know you came into the league, you were with guys like Earl Campbell and, and great running backs and teams that used to, you know, just have those big hard nosed defensive linemen that, you know, stop the run and all that. Now, I mean, we're seeing linebackers now. I mean, back then, I mean, Jack Lambert was only 225, but most of the linebackers are big, heavy dudes who could kind of bear up for the run game. Now, you know, things have evolved kind of away from that. Where do you see the league headed in the future? I mean, you've seen it for 42 years. How? Do, what are the most striking differences and similarities you see? Well, uh, you know, I've always thought the past. I mean, if you remember in, in 95, uh, my first year there, we played uh, we played Miami in the playoffs, and Marino threw it, I think, 64 times. So they were going uh, back then. Uh, uh, but, uh, in fact, I think you had a touchdown in that game, but we won that game. So that was uh, – but anyway, the, uh, yeah, the, the passing game, I've always thought the passing game was the key. You know, if you can get pressure on the passer, you can score a lot more uh, throwing the ball than you can run the ball because running the ball takes more time. Uh, and, you know, the worst passer in the league uh, overall averaged about five yards an attempt. So, you know, you don't have running backs that average that. So, uh, you know, passing game is still the key in pro football, in my opinion. What about defending the passing game, Wade? What's the key to doing that? Well, you have to have pressure on the passer, um, you know, because if they can stand back there, all of them, you know, all, all of them can – uh, complete a high percentage of passes. Uh, obviously, coverage is and coverage and and rush are the key. But uh, you know, it, and it's uh, it's a constant uh, work uh, defensively to try to try to get that that on the passer and and the coverage together. So, it's, Steve uh, and I have sort of an ongoing discussion about that. We uh, is the is it is it more important to rush the passer or have good coverage on the back end? Uh, I think the rush and the pass are probably, you know, will, will determine. Unless you've got people that can cover man-to-man, you know, all over the field, which is just hard to find. Uh, you got to play some zones. So uh, I think your pass rush ends up probably a little more important, although coverage is really key. But uh, I, th- I would say the rushers, you know, you, you know, when you get, took a team, you went to the Super Bowl with the Rams just a, cu- a hand, you know, cup two, three, two years ago, and you know you did it with you know Sean McVay, and he got a lot of kudos for the way he ran his offense and all that. Can a defense can defenses still win championships, Wade? Well, Super Bowl Fifty, I'm pretty sure we did with Denver, and then mm-hmm. uh, right, you know, it was thir- thirteen to three. So I mean, we we played pretty well against Tom Brady and the, the losers. Yeah. Bowl. So I think defense, yeah, their defense won the game. You know, we only got three points. So, yeah, I'd say super uh, uh, defenses can win championships or Super Bowls. Uh, one, one of them, you know, their their defense won it. And I really believe our defense uh, in Super Bowl 50 with Denver against Cam and those guys, you know, we had seven sacks and, and you know, scored a touchdown on defense. We had, I think we won, overall won the game on defense. Although yeah. teams, you know, teams the most important, you know, and, and all of us know that. Live on the line with Wade Phillips, former Bills head coach, former Bills defensive coordinator. You had good defenses with the Buffalo Bills, both as coordinator and, and head coach, Wade. People like Sam Cowart and John Holasek and Bruce Smith, Ted Washington. How do those? How does that group rank with some of the great defenses you've had around the NFL? Uh, well, they're right up there. I mean, you know, Bryce Pop was player of the uh, defensive player of the year. Bruce Smith was defensive player of the year. Uh, you know, the guys you named were all really good players. Uh, you know, then we had we had this guy on offense that played special teams was the best special team and should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, got got us the ball in good field position all the time. And you know, the other thing about Steve is. Is, you know, the gunner position, you know, that's part of special teams, and he was the best ever. So, uh, you know, I, I think I think he's, he should certainly be in the Hall of Fame. I wish they'd give uh, special teamers and uh, assistant assistant coaches a chance to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> but, 
Yeah, Wade, you're you're gonna have to be watch the way you talk about it because people are gonna think you're senile in your old age here. But I, <laughs> I appreciate the thoughts anyway. And I and I'm here. You moved back to Houston. I remember. I know that a, a number of guys who who I used to cross paths with, and I when I got drafted way back in the day, a lot of guys make their home down there. It's become a real haven for uh, former football players, particularly the old Oilers are even still there now that they're the Texans. Do you have any any thoughts about? Uh, how that changeover occurred. I mean, I know you've you've been a, a kind of a Houstonian for a long, long time. What do you think about the fact that there's a different team in Houston rather than the old Oilers? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the you know once the team left, it, it, uh, I guess the same thing happened to Cleveland. I don't know or Baltimore. I mean, so, but. Uh, yeah, there was a loss here for a while, and you know, and of course I was part of the Oilers and coached for the Oilers, and I, I went to University of Houston, so I'm a Houstonian anyway. So I was certainly sad when they left, and then, uh, and I was I was here, you know, with the Texans when they came back, so I coached for the Oilers and the Texans, so and the and the Cowboys, so <laughs> right. Uh, um, but as far as the uh, Texans coming in. I coached with them, and we won. We won the division in the playoff game the first time ever. So that was kind of fun to be back in Houston and do that. Yeah, with Wade Phillips on the line with us. Hey, Wade, I was thinking about, and as you said, you're correct. I mean, three years with the Rams. The Rams have had a lot of turnover. I mean, even I, I, I consider myself a fan of Nickel Roby Coleman, who just got let go the other day last week. I guess. Uh, they just got caught up in what cap uh, crunches uh, for as far as players, or what do you think went went wrong with the Rams? Uh, well, it looks like it a little bit. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, Roby's a great one. I mean, he's uh, he, he's a uh, he's a really good player. I, I, you know, somebody somebody needs a nickel back. He's the best. Uh, yeah, he's the best I've been in a long time. So uh, it'd be smart for somebody to pick him up. That's for sure. But He's Rams, a good kid yeah, too. I, I felt I bad that he got it. all caught up in that rules change. Uh, you know, he told me at the Super Bowl. I talked to him. He said, "Yeah, I interfered with them, but they didn't call it. Now they're going to change it. You know, it's crazy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he uh, he's a really good player. I, I think somebody would be smart to pick him up for sure. Um, and uh, as far as the rules, I mean, you know, they 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 some of us knee jerk, you know, and I, and I think we yeah. saw that. I mean, I think it didn't work out the way they thought it would. It looked like to me, at least last year. Wait, I I know that you've been you coached for a long time, and and guys like Nickel, Roby Coleman. There's a lot of a ton of players that you coached that a lot of people probably wouldn't remember. And I'm never going to ask you to you know pick out your all time favorite, but could you give us a short list of guys that will, you know, forever kind of be special to you for maybe their not even maybe so much for their ability to play football, but maybe for the kind of person they were, the relationship you had with them? Oh, wow. There's too many. I mean, that's the great thing about uh, football and, and certainly places I've been. It's, uh, there's so many really great players that are good people, too. You know, that that uh, I think it goes hand in hand. You know, uh, some people, you know, talk about athletes being whatever, prima donnas or or whatever, but the guys I've been around overall, I mean, the great players that I've been around, I've been around a whole bunch of them. Uh, I don't know, like 40 or 50 uh, Hall of Famers. So, uh, and most every one of them were, were great guys. So, uh, you know, to pick out, yeah, pick out one or two, I mean, you know, the, uh, at, at Buffalo, I mean, the time we, we were there, I mean, how do, how do you get better people than, you know, being around uh, Jim Kelly or Thurman Thomas or Bruce Smith or, or Bryce Pop or and the, uh, all the other guys you mentioned too. I mean, and and Ken Urban who played, uh, you know, who played corner yeah. for us and made big play. I mean, you know, it just it goes on and on. So uh, I'm blessed to be uh, been a, been able to be a part of uh, a lot of different teams and uh, and enjoyed it. Hey, wait, I came across a quote of yours from a month or so ago. Uh, I think it was a Sports Illustrated article. You said, quote, if they only fired bad coaches, then I'd feel bad, but they they have fired a lot of good coaches. It happens. It's part of the business. Uh, you kind of resigned yourself to that fact, huh? I do. I do. I mean, you know, they, uh, 
you know, they cut good they cut good players too, you know. And mm-hmm. you know, that happens so uh but yeah, coaching wise, I mean it's it's there's a lot of different things that go into it certainly and uh and it's not it, because it's not all wins and losses. And I found that out I, my first five years with the Oilers, uh, we had we had the most wins in the in the National Football League through those five years, uh, or through the the three years. Uh, the last three years I was with the Oilers, we had the most wins in football, and we got fired. So that's when I realized, uh. hey, you know, just do the best you can do at whatever you do. And uh, certainly, you two guys have done that too. So uh, it it can happen to anybody, though. Wait, yes. is your son Wesley still coaching with the Rams? Yeah, Wes is with the Rams, and uh, he's tight ends coach, right? They, yeah, he's coaching tight ends. You know, he should be a coordinator pretty soon, I would think. Uh, yeah. He's got a great back background, and he's a hell of a coach. So awesome. Well, it's great talking to you. I got, I got to ask you, how big of an inconvenience has this uh, quarantine been for you and your family down in Houston? I think just like everybody else, you know, like I say, I mean, you, you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, my campaign is, is, uh, uh, stop, stop the virus, save the old people. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, S-T-O-P, save the old people. But anyway, stop. uh, (laughs) Yeah. So so we need to stop, we need to stop this thing and everybody's doing their part and, you know, we're staying at home, and uh, I tell Laurie we're enjoying each other <laughs> a little more closer <laughs> yeah. than sometimes you want to. But, no, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, but you know, you still talk to your family a lot on the phone and so forth, and, uh, you know, so maybe it's bringing us closer, closer together. I hear you. Hey, Wade, thanks for this. It's been great catching up with you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, and I still love the fans in, in Buffalo. I mean, uh, uh, probably the greatest fans that I've been around, and I've been around the league a long time. So, uh, kudos to them. They're they're great, and and they got they got the best gro- broadcaster and the best special teamer that uh, any teams have ever had. So. <laughs> we're gonna have to get you on. We're gonna have to get you on once a week, Wade. You're yeah. good for uh, you're good for our morale here. Thanks for yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, I might, I might be seeing now, like you said. <laughs> oh, thanks, Wade. Appreciate you, man. Take care, thanks, Wade. Yeah, you Wade Phillips, yeah. former Bills head coach.